when was the last time you saw Chris? Out of the carport. Okay. And about what time was that? Around 5.30, quarter to 6. Okay. And did you later discover that he wasn't under the carport? Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right. How did you come to discover that? I walked outside hollering for him, and he wasn't. He was gone out of the yard. Okay. And uh, what happened after you discovered that he wasn't under the carport? What did you do? I, I felt like he had just, like, gone next door to play or, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, I, my husband got home. He had, had gone to pick Ryan up. And when he got home, I said, we were going to go out to eat at Shoney's. And I told Mark, I said, let's get in the car and just ride around the neighborhood, and we'll find, we'll pick him up and take him on. Let's go eat. Okay. And uh, did you find him? No, sir. Okay. And after you all drove around the neighborhood, uh, did you also look other places? We, we drove around the neighborhood and drove around the neighborhood and drove around the neighborhood, and then we saw a police officer that was parked um, up there where the old family dollar store is that's closed down, uh -huh. and he was parked by that phone there. Uh -huh. And we pulled up there, and we told him that we couldn't find our eight-year-old, and we'd been looking for him for, you know, a couple of hours, and that we were concerned, and how do you go about, you know, getting the police involved mm -hmm. to help us look. And he told us to go home and to call the police department and file a missing child report, okay. which is what we did. All right. So y'all went directly from there back home? Yes, sir. We went right. directly from did, there Did an officer home. come out and take a report? Yes. All right. About what time was that approximately? Right around 8 o'clock, sir. It was, it was getting dark. After you got home from court, uh, was your brother at home? Um, mm. All right. <clears throat> After you found that he wasn't at home, did you did you do anything to look for him there around the, that area? Yes, sir, I did. I uh, I looked around on Wilson Street because uh, uh, my dad said that he went to his uh, friend Steve uh, Branch. You know. Okay. Did you look any on North Fourteenth? Um, yeah, I went down the street. Did you find anything down the street? Uh, uh not really. Christopher wasn't at home, it would have been around 6.30. Okay. And, there, and the reason for that time, I left the house at 5.30 to come get my oldest son, Ryan, who was here at the courthouse, testifying about a case that he had seen on a lady for reckless driving. Okay. And uh, it was the day that the little gray-headed lady held court. I can't think of her name. Miss Margaret. Margaret, Miss Margaret, that's here. Well, as soon as court was out, let me back up. When I left the house at 5.30, I left Christopher under the carport with instructions to pick up paper under the carport, clean up the carport, and just as soon as I got Ryan, we was going to come back and go eat supper. So I came up here and waited till the court case was over, and that was over. I got Ryan, we drove home. Well, we pulled up in the driveway, and I didn't see him under the driveway, but I thought maybe, you know, he was in the house. So I went in the house, and right inside our door, of course, there's the kitchen. My wife was on the phone talking to her boss. Mm -hmm. And I asked her, I said, uh, where's Christopher? And she kind of did like this, you know, just a minute. And then she got off the phone from talking with her boss and said, well, he's right outside. She said he's come in and out a time or two, wants to get, I think, a drink of water or a cookie. She said he's been in and out a couple times. He's just right outside. So I walked back out, hollered across the fence to the neighbors, because sometimes he goes next door and plays with the neighbor's kids. We didn't hear any answer. And then I told my son, Ryan, I said, get on your skateboard, you know, and go down and see if he's playing with the two little girls down the street. So he took off down there to check. 
And when he came back, he said, no, they hadn't seen him. So we got in the car, my wife, myself, and Ryan, and started driving around our neighborhood, which would like be down to Ingram, and then down Ingram and come back up Goodwin and cut through uh, Wilson and McAuley and just driving all around our neighborhood around East High School, just driving all around that area right there looking for him. And then about 7.30, we looked for about an hour, and I had to come up here to Broadway and kind of sitting by the Dollar General, no, well, yeah, it was kind of by the Dollar General store, there was a black police officer sitting there in his car, and I pulled up beside him and rolled my window down. I said, sir, we can't find my son. He's missing. He said, well, how long have you been looking for him? I said, about an hour or so. And he looked at his watch. He said, well, why don't you give it till around 8 o'clock? And he said, if you don't find him, call the police station and let them know what he was wearing and all. And they'll send a, an officer by and you can give them a report. And then they'll put out over the mic what he's wearing and the patrolman riding around and maybe see So I went back to the we. We looked a little bit more around the neighborhood before we made it back home. When we got back home, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to call the sheriff's department. I said, because they got a search and rescue squad. I said, and we might need them. I said, listen, you know, I, I'm starting to get, you know, worried because my son has never gone off anywhere, you know, for any amount of time. He's always stayed right there in the neighborhood. And it's now, you know, dark. It's going to be coming up pretty soon. In his police interview in 2007, he claimed he saw Mark and Melissa Byers driving on the service road from inside the woods. Mark and Melissa were only driving on that road at 7 p.m., according to them. So if Hobbs was in the woods at 7 p.m., why didn't he see the West Memphis Three in a three-acre patch of woods? Yeah, I heard the questions. Um, I was, I did see Mark and Melissa on the service road, and... As far as why did I see the West Memphis Three in there, I didn't know what I was looking for. I was just walking around a patch of three-acre patch of wood, not knowing what was out there or what to expect, what to look for, nothing. We do, we were following uh, tips from people who said we'd seen them go into them woods. 